Okay, today guys, I'm coming to you with the setup of the Garmin 770 LMT-S. Now, this is a unit that is designed for travel trailers and fifth wheels and RVs and stuff like that. Uh, it's designed to keep you out of those situations where you find yourself using your cell phone and you get yourself in like downtown mobile like mine did it had me in literally downtown mobile pulling a 38 foot bumper pull trailer uh, when i say downtown i was looking up at all the buildings and it was extremely extremely stressful situation and it just wasn't very fun so this unit is supposed to uh help you not get in that situation this unit costs 400 dollars and if it keeps me from one of those situations just one time, it's worth every single penny. So let me turn this camera around and show you exactly the setup on how this thing works. I know when you get stuff new like this, it seems like it can be kind of complicated. There's a lot of little uh, ins and outs and bells and whistles, but I'm gonna break it down for you. It's really not that complicated. All right, so let me turn this camera around and then we'll get started again. Okay guys, so once you power on your unit, this is your main screen. You got your where to and your view map, okay? And then you have your settings, which we're gonna go through settings first because you need to get hooked up to Wi-Fi first thing, okay? So the first thing you do is you go to settings and under settings, there's 11 screens, okay? And each screen has sub screens and we're gonna cover some of that. It's very simple. Okay, you're gonna wanna go to your wireless networks and then you're gonna wanna go down here and to Wi-Fi and search for networks, okay? You touch it and it's gonna bring up all the different networks around you. You pick yours and enter your Wi-Fi password and connect. It's pretty simple, right? Then you're gonna to wanna to go up here to Bluetooth, okay? You're gonna to wanna to touch Bluetooth. You're gonna to wanna to go to search for devices and then you will find your cell phone, okay? And once you find your cell phone, go ahead and hit accept and it's gonna give you a code a three or four digit code you put in your code and it connects so now you've got your Wi-Fi connected and your phone connected okay then we're gonna go back out here to the main screen this is just your main setting screen okay and you're gonna to want to touch updates and it will do a little check for you and mine had to go ahead and do an update I'm sure yours will also as you can see mine both have green check marks by them which means it's totally up to date what you're going to want to do though on yours is going to have an option to install all updates for me it took an hour and a half i from what i've read that's pretty standard so go ahead and let it do its updates and then come back to it now make sure you are hooked to a power source because if this thing runs out of power while it's doing its update it will basically brick this device which means it will be unusable and it, it gives you a warning about that so it doesn't catch you off guard don't do it if there's a thunderstorm coming or anything that may happen within an hour or two uh, because it needs to make sure that it has enough power to do its full update, okay? So we got that covered. So now we're back here, we went to settings, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and set up the vehicle, okay? Now your car, there's nothing to set up on because it just does standard stuff. You go touch the fifth wheel and you press the little um, wrench button. You put in your height, which mine is only like 11 foot three, but I put 12 six just for a little bit of insurance. Width is 100 inches overall height. Uh, I put that in there and my gross vehicle weight, which would be the travel trailer and the um, the weight of the travel trailer and my truck. And you just, you just, you know, you put, you touch them, you touch each one and put in the numbers that you want and you're good to go. Okay, you can do max speed if you want to. I put on, it just I just put in one propane. I actually have two 40 pound tanks, but I just put one in at 80. I'm guessing it needs to know that so it can keep you out of certain tunnels and things like that. Okay, so now we've got that covered. We're back to the settings. We're gonna go to map and vehicle. Okay, under this you can choose your icon of what you want um, your vehicle to look like. It's got a bunch of different little options there. You just pick the one that you want, which for me I wanted the truck and the trailer option. And that's what, I, that's what I set mine at, okay? Now the driving map view. This is, for me, I like track up to where my vehicle is always pointing to the top of the screen and the map itself is rotating. But you don't have to do that. You can always have it, some people like it, to where north is up. Right now I'm actually pointing south, so that's why my vehicle is pointing south. Or you can do the 3D mode, which is basically what I like to call the drone mode, like a little airplane behind you is kind of giving you that, that 3D mode. But I'm gonna keep it with track up 
because that's just how I like it, okay? The map detail, um, I don't really know. This, you can do more or less. Um, it just gives you a lot more side streets. Um, I keep it right at normal, and it seems to be drawing all the neighborhood streets around me and stuff like that. So that seems to work pretty good. Uh, map theme, I don't, this is just, it doesn't really matter what you pick. It just gives you different color backgrounds. It's got a bunch of different names on here. Um, I just picked one and went with it. But there's, I think, 10 different options of color schemes. That's really all that that is. Okay, so now we're going to keep on scrolling down for map tools. All right, now this has some interesting stuff in it. Um, it will show you, um, it'll let you know when stop signs and uh, the change route options. It's just stuff that, that appears on your screen at different times. And you can choose to have it show that your elevation, your turns. In other words, if you have a stop sign or something that's coming up, it'll have a little sign that'll tell you a stop sign's coming. If you're getting ready to have to take a left turn, um, it will tell you, it'll show the left turn signal, okay? These are just options that, I just kind of left them all checked as they were. The trip data is pretty cool. It tracks your speed and mileage and it keeps a little log, which um, of all the places that you've been, it just kind of tracks every time you turn the GPS on, where you went on that day. So we'll cover that here in just a little bit also. You've got your volume and your brightness um, and your traffic conditions. Now for traffic conditions to work, um, you've got to have the Google, I'm sorry, the, um, the, um, the Garmin app. And we'll cover that here in just a few minutes as well. But I've got that turned on so it can give me live updates. Um, I don't need to see photos of uh, live traffic, but I do have the weather, which also goes into the uh, the app that you have to get from Garmin, okay? And it's a $5 app. The app is free, but the services cost a one-time fee of $5. Um, and it lets you pull up weather and stuff um, on this on this actual screen, which I don't know, I've, I've used it once or twice just checking it's very slow. I think it's faster just to use a weather app on your phone, have the person next to you give you, um, just have them pull up the weather and tell you what's going on with that. Okay, so auto zoom, I don't like auto zoom. That's whenever you're coming up close to your turn, it starts zooming in and just basically zooms in and shows you doing the turn. I like to keep it to where it just kind of gives me the, the more distant view. And I have mine set at 300 feet. My maps are maps you can create on the computer and download into this. I did not, um, I did not, I have not messed with that really. So these related items, you, anything below this basically takes you back out to the, to the next screen. Okay, so when you see that related items, just know it's bringing the next items in line. So we've got navigation and route preview. Um, which is basically anytime you're building a map, it will show you the route preview, okay? The calculation mode, you can do e either of these three settings, which is faster time, faster time, off-road, or shortest distance. I did the faster time option. Um, avoidance, now you can pick stuff if you're not ever wanting to do a U-turn or highways or ferries or carpool lanes or unpaved roads. Those are the ones I have checked for it to avoid. That's pretty self-explanatory on those. Um, custom avoidances, that lets you put in um, tunnels and different things. I'll show you just real quick. You basically add, and I've never really messed with this, this at all, so I really don't know how to set that up. I just figured the general ones are probably all that I need to uh, stay away from. Toll roads, you can put it on block all or allow them. Same with environmental zones. If you had something um, that needed a, uh, some sort of special sheet for to, to be transporting, it could guide you around that stuff. And then you have GPS simulator, which basically is just getting on there and playing and having a little bit of fun with it. Okay, so that's under navigation. Now, all these are still part of the 11 tabs that are under your settings, okay? We already did wireless network, um, driver assistance. Now, it will tell you... Um, an audio driver alert, okay? I turned most of these off. What it will do is on your screen, even though I don't have these boxes checked, something will flash up on the screen. Like for example, if I'm speed, if I'm going, if I'm speeding, the speed limit exceeded, my speed on there will turn red. A box turns red around it. Let me know, hey, you're speeding. If you have these boxes checked, every time the speed limit is reduced, 
like you're coming up from a 55 to a 45, your, your GPS unit is going to ding. Or if you uh, break the speed limit, it's going to ding. And it just it seems like it was ding, dinging all the time. Uh, for railroad crossings, animal crossings, school zones, curves. I, I did let it ding for in case I'm coming up in an area that I don't know and it's a severe curve. It will say, hey, you might want to check your speed. And I wanted to know if slower traffic was ahead. You know, if you're pulling your trailer, that's something that you might need to have something get your attention or let you know. So those were the only two that I kept checked, okay? Um, so now, uh, proximity alerts. Um, oh, it has a fatigue warning, which I guess after so many hours of driving, it's, it's gonna tell you to pull over. I don't have that, have that checked. Um, these are just a few different uh, alerts for things that might be in your area. Okay, so we're going back out now. We did the driver assistance, the display. Um, you can do the color mode, brightness, and bright. I have this really set. It should, it pretty much auto adjust for whatever your conditions are. This is if I'm not hooked to power, the display will go off after two minutes if you're not in a route. If you're just driving along, that helps to conserve the battery. The screenshot, I do not have. I'll show you what it does. Basically, you take that and you saw up here this little picture of a camera it changed from a question mark to a camera you can take a screenshot and basically i believe this is more for if you have the backup camera option or the camera options that you can have on so if somebody's riding your tail you could take a picture of them doing that or whatever you might want to i don't see the point in taking a screenshot of your map um which you could i mean you could do that whatever on your screen it just takes a snapshot of it I, I just decided that wasn't a feature that I really needed. Okay, so now we're back out here. Um, we were just under the display, uh, traffic mode. Um, this, in order for this to work, it's not gonna let me, as you can see, I have to have my app turned on on my phone, which my phone is not currently with me. But if you turn on this app, if you have the app open, it will be doing the live updates on traffic and stuff for you. It's supposed to um, let you know if there's any slow traffic, um, accidents, construction, whatever, whatever may be. So um, I don't know, it says subscriptions. Of course, it's not gonna let me do it because I don't have my phone. I think it's a one-time $5 fee. I could be wrong, it could be $5 a month. I will try to find out and put a note right here if it is $5 a month. Um, optimized route, I have that set it automatic and traffic alerts, um, just most, uh, so that it just lets me know what's going on in front of me. Okay, so then you just have your units, which is time, you know, miles, how you, how you want that all set up. If you want military time, you can change it. Um, and then language and keyboard, which is, you're probably going to want to keep it as is. And this is just about the device. You don't really need too much in that area. So that is all of your settings under the initial setup, okay? Pretty easy. I know we crashed through that, but it's it's really very simple. Now, here is something that's pretty cool. You got your apps, okay? You have your owner's manual. Mine, when it's hooked to my phone, my phone, I can actually answer calls by touching the screen, and this will work as a two-way phone. Um, basically, it's a speaker phone is what I should say. Um, it will also, with the smart notifications, my text will pop up on that screen and I can't reply to them, but I can just see them and then hit an X and close them. Um, the smart link is the app from Garmin that you will need to download. It's a free, it looks just like this pretty much, only I believe it's yellow at the app store. I don't have the watch link and I can turn on, I don't have a watch that links to it. I can turn on this if my phone were near me, I could show you that to you, but it basically just brings up another little map that shows you some spots where there's some construction or some delays. The live photo is also, I, would, I do not have the camera. I did not buy the, the camera with this unit, but you can. Okay, so some other options here are your live track. Live track to me, I don't see much point in it. Um, what you can do is you can turn it on and send text messages and invite people to follow your tracks. They can So basically you're live broadcasting where you're at. If you have a camera, it may show live feed from the road. I don't really know. I think what it basically does though for most people is it's just gonna show, um, show you traveling down a highway or a, um, 
basically down a highway, kind of like find my friends with your iPhones where you can touch it and see where they're actually at, what, you know, what, if you're following family going across country or whatever, um, that is basically what that's for. To me, that'll probably be using data. So I just don't see going much into that option. I'm not going to use it. So obviously you have the option for the backup camera if you have one and voice command is pretty cool. So you can say voice command. Say a command. Okay, and this is pretty uh, pretty sensitive. So any of the options on the screen you can do. So let's go find a place. Speak the name of a place. Okay, Tyler State Park. Searching for Tyler State Park. Select a line number. Line one. Would you like to begin navigation? Yes. Okay, and then it's calculating, it brings it up. As you can see, it does it, it's very easy. Um, sometimes it will have a, it has trouble hearing what you're saying. Uh, especially to highlighted route. Especially if, if you have a, a big uh, country slang or uh, a country draw, it may not understand you, but for the most part, it does very, very well. So we're gonna get out of that. I'm gonna stop the navigation. We were in the apps. So the voice command is very, voice control is very, very, helpful say a command oh, see I said voice command that's what activates it exit okay so this trip planner this is pretty cool option okay and I'm gonna do I've already got seven trips saved but I'm gonna show you how to do one it's very very simple but learning how to adjust one it can be a little bit of a pain so I figured it out so I do a quick demo of this okay so we're gonna select a start destination which I'm gonna where I am now is what I'm gonna pick okay select that's where we're at now now you could add a bunch of different legs to this, as many as you wanted. If you wanted to go five or 10 different places, you could add them all in there. Um, we're not going to, we're just gonna pick two to make this simple, okay? So we're gonna select a finished destination. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do some of the recent places that I have, have Googled, okay? Let's just go to um, Spring, Creek Screen, Spring Creek Barbecue here in Tyler. Okay, that's where I'm gonna select. And we're gonna hit next. Okay, it's going to calculate it. Okay, so let's say that, let's just say that that's a 200 mile trip, just for pretend, okay? It's really only not very far at all. But we're going to save this and we're going to call it uh, Spring Creek, okay? Because you have to save it first before you can, um, before you can adjust it. Okay, so now it is saved. So then we're going to go back in there and we're going to touch map. Now this little icon right here is how you touch the screen to adjust the, be the best way to get there, okay? So you, uh, or, or a way that you might wanna go. As you can see, it says, the route shaping feature allows you to easily change the course of your route. Touch road on the map uh, to a shaping point. When you are done adding points, select save, okay? So it's pretty self-explanatory. So how you do this is, Let's say that we didn't want to go just straight up over there. We wanted to actually go over here first. So you touch the screen and see it says calculating. So it's going to say, okay, we're going to bring you around this way. And you kind of get the idea. You can adjust however you wanted and it'll, it'll redraw to your destination. So for me, I use that like we were going to go to Austin. Uh, the GPS had me going right through Austin, which I did not want to do. So I touched the toll road that goes around Austin and it diverted me around it because I know enough to know if you can avoid the city, you want to avoid the city. And that's just how you do it. Once you've made your changes, you hit save, okay? Now, one thing you wanna do um, whenever you're looking at these, so it's, it is now saved, I can go back. This is the main one, but see it, I have it right now in car mode. So it saved that trip as car mode. So I wanna go in, if I wanna change that, I would change it to fifth wheel or, or travel trailer, whichever one, you know, and then it, it's redoing the route. It's just double checking, making sure everything is where it needs to be. Okay, so now we go back. Now I've got eight trips saved. I don't want to really save the Spring Creek one. So these are all my different, different ones that I've got for trips coming up. And this one was just a test one. But I'm going to go in here and it just asks you, all right, do you want to delete trips? Yes, it'll ask you which ones. So I, right now I'm just going to delete Spring Creek. Delete and it's gone. It is gone. So that's how you do your trip mode. Okay. And that's pretty much 
Um, you got some other stuff down here that's where I've been. This is the cool, this is what I was talking about earlier. It keeps a log of all the places that you've been. You pull it up by date and it'll bring up the different trips that you've done. Um, so that's kind of, kind of cool for places that you've been. And that is pretty much the majority of your options. That is your deal. So you can touch here and this is, has your save places. Uh, places that you know you can you can type in an address it'll draw a map and you can hit save okay not very hard it has your categories with all your RV places now this is interesting say you want to go to RV parks all right let's just say we pick this one well when you hit information it gives you the phone number on the screen that you can go ahead and call to make sure they have openings or if it was a repair shop or whatever it would do the same the same thing same for restaurants it has all that information in here and it's just got a bunch of different stuff that can help you okay um, as you can see it's pretty user friendly um, I like recent for it just brings up all the recent places that you have have checked and that's pretty much it now all these options are that was where to go and that's right under all that stuff you can just do your searches and then you have your your map which on mine I, like I said I have it set for the map to be rotating um, and normally whenever I'm driving right in this area it'll have like an E from pointing east or SW for southwest it lets me know which direction I'm actually going now in town I usually have it at 300 feet because I'm doing speeds of under 50 which that's a pretty good ways off uh, if I'm doing like 70 out on the interstate, 65, 70, I would probably just back this out to five or 800 feet. Um, and it's pretty user friendly. So that's pretty much it from this screen. You have different things um, like for the up ahead. It will tell me when I'm navigating, when I'm driving down a road, it tells me the next road that's in front of me and it keeps that, it keeps that going. Uh, most of the options are pretty self-explanatory. This is a great, great, great unit, man. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, I know I will not be going on any trips without it. And I have it set for when, um, oh, this is one thing you may need to know. Um, whenever you're gonna switch, say you're not in your car, just go to this car profile and you wanna switch it to travel trailer select. And it's letting you know, okay, now you're in RV mode. So that's just right under settings. It's real easy. You switch it over before you're gonna leave. That way you know uh, that you're in travel trailer mode. So guys, this is a great product. Get out there and grab it. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. It's set up user friendly. You can also tell I'm in travel trailer mode as opposed to car because of that um, right there, the icon at the top. And now it's back to car. So it lets you know which one you are, you're in. Guys, I'm going to be doing reviews and all different kinds of, of uh, trips of different parks all over the country, mainly in the south near Texas, mostly in Texas. So if you would, like my Facebook page, Southern Trace Camping, or the same page for YouTube. And stay tuned for more information on different products. If you would, uh, just get out there with your family. Have a great time. Enjoy that time with the kids because they're growing quick. Be safe on the road and God bless.